This is five on your side at six, focused on you. A woman is dead and a teenage girl is in custody after a shooting at the Forest Park Metrolink station. And tonight we're learning about the connection between the suspect and the victim. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. That shooting happened Saturday at the Forest Park to Bolivar stop. Five on your side's Holden Kerwicki spent the day looking into the shooting. And Holden, what are police telling you about this case? Well, Mike Ann, though they have the suspect in custody, police have yet to identify her or the victim who is currently listed as a Jane Doe. However, they told me in the past year there have been 257 calls for service at that location, and about a third of which were called in by officers. And people that live in the area told me something simply needs to change. At the DeBoliver Forest Park Metrolink stop, things are quiet today. But it was a much different scene Saturday afternoon. I'm tired about it. I've been seeing violence my whole life. I'm, I'm really tired of it. Lost a lot of friends in the streets of St. Louis. True, who asked not to be shown on camera, says the shooting that left a woman dead and a 17-year-old in custody hits close to home because he knew both women. But they was friends once upon a time, and they actually got into it over uh, some clothes. Whether it's a 17-year-old or a 37-year-old, it's a tragedy. Um, something we see all too much of in St. Louis these days, um, and unfortunately we're seeing it more amongst juveniles. The 17-year-old suspect is currently facing charges of second-degree murder and armed criminal action, but defense attorney Greg Smith says it's not clear if she'll be tried as a juvenile or an adult. What, what courts are concerned with, even if it's a child or an adult, is recidivism. Is this child going to reoffend? Is this adult, adult going to reoffend? So what, what we have to look at is their, your history. If there is a pattern of behavior that's concerning. Before making that determination, investigators often look at a suspect's grades and school record, criminal history, and interview their parents. And generally in a certification hearing, you, you want to know, know what happened or at least what's alleged to have happened. So that can cause delays. Um, you can get a certification hearing within a couple months or, you know, six, seven, eight months. It really depends on the case. As we wait on the court system to make a final determination as to how to properly charge the teen, True says he's looking forward to a day when incidents like this aren't common in St. Louis. Just ready for it all to stop. Police were able to make a quick arrest in this case thanks to the cameras on the platform, which helped ID that suspect. As for the victim, all police can tell us at this time is that she is either in her late teens or early 20s. Mike. Holden, thanks. An update tonight on a developing story in North St. Louis County. Less than two hours ago, police identified a teenager who was shot and killed outside an apartment complex. The deadly shooting happened Sunday night in Riverview. Five on your side's Megan Kernan is live outside the North County Police Precinct with new information. Megan. Mike, that teenager has been identified as 15 year old Corian Edwards. He was one of four teens shot around 10 last night. Another teenager was critically injured while two others were sent to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Today I spoke with people in the neighborhood who say they want to see this violence end. On Mother's Day, rounds of gunfire erupted outside of the Jati apartment complex on Tolly Lane in Riverview. When police arrived, an officer found four teenage boys shot in the street. Their ages range from 15 to 17 years old. One of the boys, 15 year old Corian Edwards, died at the scene. That's messed up. <laughs> The kids You're supposed to be doing something. The kids supposed to be doing it. A neighbor who asked us to hide her identity says hearing gunfire is the norm for her area. Now you hear them all the time, just like a couple of, but that was like consistent. And there lies the problem. Dr. Marty Casey is the owner and founder of the Ungun Institute. She grew up not too far from where the shooting happened. Just the thought on Mother's Day that you come home and you receive a phone call or you find out by way of neighbors that your child was involved in a horrific, traumatic shooting and your, your, your baby lying in the streets. And um, I, my heart truly bleeds for those who were involved. Dr. Casey says there are things we need to start working on to help end gun violence in our communities. Training is key because that's what we're missing. We have to teach peace because right now we happen to be in an epidemic of war in our communities. Until we decide to come together collectively to make a difference, I mean, everyone at the table, every voice to be heard, we're possibly going to be facing one of the 
most violent summers we've ever seen. St. Louis County police are asking anyone with information to come forward. You can call Crime Steppers at 1-866-371-TIPS. Live in North County, Megan Kernan, five on your side. Rain has returned to the region, including some thunderstorms. Here's a live look at Edwardsville. You can see the streets are wet from the rain and hopefully nothing severe is coming our way. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell has the weather first forecast. You know, it's highly unlikely we'd see any severe weather out of these showers and thunderstorms, but for most of us, we haven't had a lot of thunder in the metro area. There is a line, though, that's out across parts of mid Missouri down into the eastern Ozarks trying to push our way. That at least has a few rumbles of thunder and some small hail. Right now around the metro area, that first wave of showers, that's lifted off to the north and northeast. That produced some decent rainfall for some of us. But here's the line of thunderstorms that's out across parts of mid Missouri. Herman, you're probably starting to hear thunder now or will in the next 10 or 15 minutes. But most of this is sliding by to your north and west. In fact, on its current trajectory, it does stay mostly to the west of St. Louis. So at least through about 9 o'clock, the rain chances are pretty low in the immediate metro area and the chances for severe weather extremely low. We'll see in a few minutes, Ann. Survivors of physical and sexual abuse want Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey to launch a statewide investigation into unlicensed religious boarding homes. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, met with some of them as they tried to lobby the Attorney General outside his office. Mark? Mike and Ann, adults who suffered physical or sexual abuse as teenagers at religious boarding schools in Missouri told horrific tales of the ways they were brought to Missouri. Many of them described being abducted in the dead of night from their own bedrooms, then hauled halfway across the country all with their parents' consent at first, but then that communication with their parents was cut off or tightly controlled once they arrived. People have been charged, but nothing's being done. No one's in jail. No one is being held accountable for this. She's talking about Agape Boarding School, the place her parents worked before they branched out to launch the Circle of Hope. Amanda Householder was one of many teenage girls who tried to run away from one of those two boarding schools while her mom and dad operated it in southwest Missouri. We weren't being heard by the... Um, sheriffs in that town. They kept pushing us off. Another girl managed to escape. She went to the police and the police officer just brought her right back. Their pleas fell on deaf ears for more than 10 years until three years ago. Dateline covered their allegations and former Attorney General Eric Schmidt filed criminal charges. I'm grateful for the media who is doing what church leaders will not do and that is exposing it. Householder's parents now face more than 100 charges in an October trial. She feels her calls to expand the investigation into other similar homes across Missouri have been ignored. I feel personally that um, we haven't been heard like we should be heard. Now they're taking their case directly to Attorney General Andrew Bailey. A month ago in Jefferson City, we hand delivered a letter to Attorney General Bailey. They called Bailey's response, quote, callous and insulting. One month later, they tried again at his office in St. Louis. We were denied uh, entrance into the building and we were told by security that they won't even take a letter. The group of survivors wants a statewide investigation into similar unlicensed boarding homes and tougher laws to expand the window for victims to sue their abusers. Despite all these scandals, there are some in this industry who are saying we want less government oversight. One challenge this group faces, most of the parents who send their teens to boarding homes in Missouri live out of state. Just because they're not Missouri voters, that doesn't mean that the attorney general or any official in Missouri should ignore the suffering they've gone through. The attorney general's office tells us tonight it, quote, does not have the legal authority to investigate or bring criminal charges, including those of sexual abuse and human trafficking, unless ordered to do so by the governor or a local judge. Survivors we spoke with today are pleading with the AG to urge lawmakers to expand those powers to investigate abuse. Coming up, shots fired outside Alton Memorial Hospital. Why police are saying this was no random act. Plus graduation day at Washington University. The message is delivered from an actress inside the ceremony and protesters outside the campus.